Hi, welcome back to Paint It Simply. I'm David Jansen. Today we're going to be showing you another fun little Paint It Simply concept lesson where we're going to paint a little butterfly and some uh, blossoms. And I'm going to do it on a horizontal board here. We do a lot of vertical boards, but horizontal boards are also kind of important. So this is just a, uh, a uh, board. It is a uh, MDF, what's called a Super MDF board. It's the new non-toxic version of the MDF uh, that we've had around in the industry for years and years. But they have a new non-toxic version of it. That's what I use. So, uh, And then I've given it a coat of some medium white, just paint by itself. You could add a little sealer to it if you would like. But uh, we're going to start out following along our same Painted Simply concepts. I'll be using my same colors, but I am adding this time... A shortcut color which I have been doing lately uh, in some of the videos because some people that are, that are teachers want to have a shortcut green and uh, we call it a benchmark green you can make it into painted simply uh, things or you can just put out some pine green this is just regular heritage multimedia pine green all the colors are taken globally here and if you need those instructions they're on uh, global art supply for you and uh, links also into the learning channel for you, okay? So, um, but they are global, so they do, uh, they're just colors that are a little bit thicker here that have had extender mixed into them and they're, and they're quite thick. I love my colors quite thick. And uh, we did a couple of question and answer videos on consistency, paint consistency. So if you need to go review those, they're also on the channel. Go take a look for that for paint consistency and you'll see that I keep my colors quite thick. So here I have found some medium white I will also uh, put out a little cap of extender here and uh, it is a little bit dirty from all the painting I do and that doesn't make any difference whatsoever. So I have a little cap of extender. I'm just going to take some extender down here. We'll take a big old dollop of our white. I'm going to do this on kind of a blue, a little bit of blue background here. So I'll take a little bit of my uh, uh, thalo blue into that. doesn't take too much. Let's take some thalo blue. As a matter of fact, let's just grab some of that and push that right out there like that. And then we'll just touch into a little bit of that. If you want it a little bit more towards the blue-violet, towards, a, a, say, for like a, an ultramarine or so, you just add a touch of that red-violet in there. And that's kind of a pretty color. Since we're going to have white and yellow blossoms, that's kind of a pretty, pretty color in there with those. And so I'm going to take some of this blue and just kind of push that around over here into the sky here now as far as colors and the amount of color and stuff that I put on my surface here I'm gonna let some of the original uh, lighter color of this um, medium white show through a little bit of it here and there I love vignette type paintings where I, I let that happen and I like to sometimes just wipe it down a little bit I don't like it too heavy on the uh, the surface and so you'll see me use some of these paints and the consistencies of these paints a little different from time to time. And, um, you know, it's a matter of feel. Get a good feel for the the uh, painting, for the consistency on the surface. You don't want to have, a, you need paint because we paint all the Prima techniques, which means we, you know, mix into those uh, colors a little bit. But we don't want to have so much that we our colors die out into this background color but you want to have enough so i have just a light coating of it onto the surface that will um, facilitate my painting so here i'll put some of that on and i like that and let's just let's just model that up a little bit more i love brush movement brush movement in a painting adds that interest adds that lovely interest to it and so I don't like to have solid areas of color or anything. I love backgrounds to have movement. For years, you know, I, like I've said in so many uh, other videos, I was a decorative painter and we'd have these perfect backgrounds. Now I like my backgrounds to have all kinds of movement in it. Let's take a little bit of pine green right down here. And let's add just a touch of that blue. It can tone down, cool down with just a little bit of the red violet we have there also. And let's just put in, we're going to, I'm going to envision some daisies coming out and coming up over here like this. So let's just put in some daisy movement area here. And, um, and just see, I move my brush in all different kinds of directions here. And out to this side here, like this. We'll let this just kind of die out over here get the lost edge which is what we talk about in so many of our videos the lost edge I'll create a little movement upward and outward movement through this paint uh, out through like this this is the kind of feeling that I want to have to this painting here we'll get a little bit of 
more blue green right in there like that some of that color movement out very light just little strikes of color here that makes it pretty and fun here and uh, we are constantly I'm constantly wiping my my um, my brush in my paper towel always have a paper towel in my hand in all the videos I'll have a paper towel in my hand and this is what I use to adjust the color a little bit let's take a little bit a tiny bit of black into that and let's just add a little area of darker contrast that we might want to have and give a little bit of that movement out out into the back we'll let it get lost out over here so these are what we call lost edges this dark contrast in here will allow me to put some really defined uh, blossoms up into that area there and that'll work fine and we'll get this lost out through here so we create this this sense of movement out through here out like this maybe down like this a little bit I'm not making the stems this is just some movement through the through the backgrounds and stuff here that the viewer will just pick up as maybe stuff that's way in the back or something like that okay so we have that now I'm going to go over to a brush. This is a number eight uh, Fusion Flat here. I'll do most of my painting here with my little number eight Fusion Flat. I'm going to take down some Hansa Yellow. Let's drop that in here like this. Maybe uh, let's have some, a little bit of uh, red into that just to change that over. And we'll have some white over here just to soften that down. I'm just going to pick up some of this color here. And we'll just push in some of that color and it'll go right into the green be kind of a greenish yellow and that's what we want to have right now this kind of greenish yellow let's turn one right down in here like this we'll turn this one here okay we have to have some ideas of some of these blossoms turning and so this one we'll put in here now this yellow is going to change I'm going to make most of these white but we're going to you know put some yellow in here first sometimes I'll put down white blossoms as grays colors and you see me do that in several videos and sometimes I do it this way and we'll turn one maybe like this and let this edge get lost right out here like that that'll be pretty here we'll just take some of this and just touch in here some other little ideas of these blossoms coming down like that maybe outside one down here like that there's a back one back there okay let's uh, sometimes I drop the centers in sometimes I'm doing it later like now and you know the centers can really go in at any time I'll take a little bit of this red violet I just look for a dark color that's all I'm looking for here's a darker cooler color so here's some uh, red violet a little bit of blue Touch of that dirty green in there. That looks nice into a nice little blossom centers. We'll put just little touches of those. Maybe there's a little bit right there. We'll make that a little ghosty one here. It's kind of gone away. We'll push in and out just a bit with that color. That'll create that center moving in and out of that blossom there. And sometimes I do this, sometimes I don't. But, you know, I don't set up each time in this painting simply I you know I have all of these different techniques that I use and I don't use the same ones all the time and I don't use the same ones on the same flowers all the time we paint for variation we don't paint for consistency and that's one thing that I, I have um, you know over the years as a decorative painter we would create one way to paint a blossom then we'd repeat that through the painting well as if you head more towards the arch you don't want to do that you create one way to paint something then the next one will have kind of the same look but it's going to be painted different so it has more interest so it's different um, and so I will I will change techniques and change things and especially change them from painting to painting on a small painting like this on not always as much but I might take a you know a, a, a set like here and maybe pull some darker color out on to one side out like this and think okay that's pretty and you know strike maybe this is a lower side of those right there and that's really that is kind of pretty there let's just follow that movement a little bit maybe a little touch here and there of that color those are kind of pretty in there like that let's take some um just go back to our pine green right into some of that blue and red violet there let's grab a tiny bit of black into that 
and let's create and a some more uh, deep darks into this area let's create a, a few little stem lines here and we can uh, some of these stem lines you want to do uh, more straight here like this and we'll let these kind of fade out and and uh, you know put multiple ones in there like that but sometimes it's straight and um, you know not always curved you know so that because stems will you know stems to flowers don't always don't always curve they will sometimes be a little straighter here and we'll just drop some in like that that's pretty little touches of color let's go let's even go right down over here into some more of this pine green here and let's just let's just get a little bit of green motion in here leaf motion and stuff in and out like this push in and out and let those just come in and out of the the green here the the thing that i could i could help you with the most i think in all this painting is you paint with confidence watch the video here several times you know how i go about approaching stuff and, and how i'm moving my brush and setting way back on my brush and moving it around and then you have to paint with confidence yours will be different i could never i can never uh, paint these again the same way because the next paint day is going my my brush is going to move a little bit different and that's the beautiful thing about painting and uh, you know if you if you're really in tune with yourself as an artist as a painter you will paint a little different every day because you paint what you feel and that's what artists try to do and that's why they get more life and energy to a painting is we get it through because we paint closer to what we're feeling that day and so you get this real light casual powerful movement sometimes it's a little stiffer you know movement and that happens you know that happens to everybody and sometimes it's just real casual light like this and fun and that's the beauty of painting and but the thing is it's painting with confidence and power so watch the painting a couple of times watch what i'm doing then go through and try it and don't try to copy it because it's almost impossible to copy something i will use sometimes negative painting not normally this early in the painting but sometimes i do negative where we take the background of an object here and and paint through that and I show this in lots of books, um, and I even use it in like birds and birding techniques. I use it a lot in many of my paintings. I use this type of uh, this type of painting. Now let's take some of the the white. Let's just go right down in here into the yellows, into these greens here. If I wanted to kick this more to a gray, I can add any kind of red because I'm slightly green. So adding increasing any kind of red if i want it to stay warm i take a tiny touch of naphtha red light and see how that immediately grays that out here and it makes it really kind of pretty if i want it to cool down i can add just a touch of the red violet in there and that will cool that down so it's not always just a black and a white here we can make a beautiful grays here that will help push back some of our our yellowish color and We'll start to build in some whites here, some white colors into these little blossoms like this. Okay. And see, I'm just striking and pulling and moving color. Sometimes I'll pull out so I don't set up a pattern to the flower. Sometimes I pull in, sometimes I pull out of the flower like that. I'm just laying on some, some real softer gray color here, here like that. Here, let's chisel this edge here. This will cause a little bit of a shorten this edge here and lengthen these edges. And if I lengthen this edge a little bit here, this this petal will roll, will turn. So I shorten it on this side here, lengthen it there and there, and it turns. Same with here. If I shorten this side here, keep this, this edge very short, lengthen it here and here, even this little bit darker out here like that, then that that petal of that flower will turn like that so we'll want to turn this one I love to turn flowers uh, in a painting because that's where you get the most interest and when I was a decorative painter we painted most of our flowers just you know four and five petals and round and then as I headed more towards painting this uh, more advanced style of painting 
I uh, started to turn my flowers a lot. And that's why I like to paint now, is I love to turn them here. So let's get like a little bud or something here. I love uh, Catherine Klein and how she paints a lot of her little small flower setups. And I love to emulate a lot of her flower setups. She was just beautiful at her flower setup. So let's just, that's a little bright. So I just touch it a couple of times. And I'm going to paint it very understated here. Just leave it down in there like that. That's all that really needs to say, okay, that's a flower there. We might want to put a little dark right underneath there. That's a little stem to it or something like that. And that's a nice little flower there. Let's come right out here with some of our grays. and Let's just push a little bit of this yellow out here. And right into some of those light colors there. There we go. And we can push back and forth and see that'll help soften that right into that sky color we had there. We do that every once in a while. I change my paper towel here. So we'll just pull a few out here like that. And push in and out a bit. And I do a lot of these times when I paint these flowers, these pushing in and out like that, I will do it several times. I will push in and out several times to get the feeling or the look of the flower that I want. So you'll see me sometimes do it quite a bit. Now let's start to step up a bit, get a bit more light color into these blossoms here. Turn your brush every once in a while. That'll make the petal curved. In other words, curve your stroke just a bit. Sometimes stroke in, just straight in here. I'll stroke across like this and then in just a bit or pull out to get some different uh, looks there. Now I had a lot of blue in there so I just picked up some more white and uh, just to get rid of some of that blue and then I'll put just a bit of that light color coming out that edge there like that, like that. Here, let's uh, pick up some more white right down here, model that into the brush. Let's put a little more light, a little more light edge out into here, onto this one. Here, a little more light edge onto this blossom. And this petal, we can pull out or you can pull in. They can do both. Here. And just pull in and out and build. And like I said, I will repeat some of these petals several times as I build them, as I paint them. I will repeat their shapes several times till I get the shapes that I want to have or the in and out look or that I want to have to that particular flower. And then I'll push in and out a bit there that incorporates what I call incorporates the center and the petals together as those colors push in and out of that center like that. And sometimes I'll leave a harsh center and sometimes I push in and out like that to incorporate those colors right down into that center there. And I like that look as well. It's just a different look. Here we go. Let's just chisel that edge there. You can also take your brush and lift out from that center to, uh, you know, take off some of that light. So sometimes I may come in and take a dark and lift out if I don't, uh, you know, like I just did on this yellow one here. Um, I'll lift that out just to get a different feel for that petal. There we go, like that. There, just... Add that just a bit, and I might want to add just a bit of that darker color right in here. Just take some of that down to the low side. So these right here will have that same type of look, but a little different than the other one here. Let's put in a few little soft movement petals here in and out. Just a suggestion of it is, you know, this is all you need to have on this flower out here. You don't need to make... A perfect flower. You go painting a perfect flower, you'll flatten your composition. And a lot of painters will do that. They'll go in there and try to paint a perfect little flower, and then that flattens their composition because everything's perfect. 
you don't need it. It doesn't need it in there. Okay, now let's uh, come back. Let's build a little bit more white here. Let's build that white up one more time right up and through here. Build that right up and through there. Now I can take off like this back. Now see that lovely movement that back and forth gives that right there. And then come back and just hit a little light color right in there like that. Doesn't it make a pretty little petal right there like that? So I can hit it. I can take this back in like this and take some of that off. And just don't forget to wipe your finger so you don't get that too much there. Then just tap into a little light and come back out and set that light back in again. And look at what a pretty little petal that makes out there. It's just a lovely little petal here. There, like that of that flower. Let's just put a little dose of white right out there like that. Maybe that coming out. A bit much there. We'll just pull it back in. There, like that. That's pretty. Pick up a little of my white. I just love this white. Just almost a consistency of toothpaste. So I can just lightly lay it on. I can pick up edges like this and lay it on and, and draw corners or do whatever it is that I want to do. I can also pull in, wipe the brush and pull in and reset that motion of that petal there. Just like I did, I could use my finger or the brush and then just reset the light here again. Right back in there. Let's take out a greenish gray here and pull out a bit. Take out a little bit of that blue there. And reset that petal. So see, I'll, I'll paint these many times to get the look that I want to have to these little blossoms like this, okay? Now let's take some yellows and let's tap a little red into that. Matter of fact, let's come through first and just tap a little bit of red right in using just a corner of the brush. Let's just tap a few little areas there of some of that red, just a little, little bit of that. That'll just be for some nice color variation. Then let's just take a corner of our Hansa. We'll start there in that center area there. And then we'll just tap this around and let it just kind of fade out there like that. So I'll pick up a big old dollop of it like this. Start out not exactly in the center. Here I'll start high of the center and just tap that around. And then it starts to run off my brush. And I just tap lighter and lighter and lighter. Just little gentle pushes of it here as I go out. And see, it leaves that center dot a heavier color right where I put it. So here I'm going to maybe want it right here. And then I'll just start to tap out here like that. That's good. And let's just put a little bit into that one. Because it's just a little guy. And that one right there, just a little guy. There. They're not big flowers yet. Let's put it a little heavier to this side. And tap that down. And if it gets a little bit too heavy... Just turn your brush over and use the other side, and that will start lifting off some of that color because it's not quite as heavy on that side. Just a little touch there on that one, and we just want an indication of it, so I'll just even tap it with my finger a little bit to soften that down. Go back and look and see if you need to add any more. Maybe this one, since it's such an important one, you can have a little bit more or maybe even have a little Hansa and some white has a little a little light to it up onto one side there that's kind of pretty let's take some of our pine green a little blue a little red violet a little black nice dark dark color here and we can come in and add a little bit of dark green variation and contrast right in here you can even do this to do a little negative painting if you want, to paint out some of the petal edges and stuff. But that's going to give you some really lovely contrast right in here. Maybe you just need a little bit. We'll just let that just come out. You can shape petals like this. Like I could come in here like this and, and use this to shape that little petal right there. Push that out like that's just a shadow of a leaf. And you see a nice edge of a petal there. That's that's one of the techniques I love to use in paint it simple. It's called negative painting. It's so important for the artist to use their backgrounds. Let's just take a little bit of our pine green and a little yellow with that. Little touches of lighter color. Let's go to a lighter yellow green as well. 
I'm going to add a few little touches of that, which will be lighter, airier little leaves and everything into the painting here. So we might have a few little guys come in right out here like this. Okay. A few will come in right out here like this. Pretty little things like that. There we go. Just little touches. Fun little touches here. With some of that yellowy green. A little bit into some stems or stem motion here. You can use this right in here like bang. Okay, that'll just get some of that green right in there into the center here. And it's it's almost like, okay, there's another, there's a little bit of a lighter leaf hanging in there pushed right there in the center so what you want more than anything else is this nice variations of you know and, and we want to soften these outside edges but some variations of your greens and so what's nice about that pine green here is I can cool it and darken it make it more of a blue green I can come down here and make it more of a yellow green very quick and very easy a little bit easier than uh, the brush mixing of the Hansa but I love the brush mixing of the Hansa that's my favorite way and, but the pine green does add that, and so a lot of our teachers and stuff are liking to do that with uh, students. And so we thought we would do a few videos and stuff and show you that as well. Okay, because that's our job. Just to give you all kinds of ideas. That's kind of nice there. Sometimes I like to just drag a little bit around and just get some of that nice movement through it. I love movement. You know, that's what makes the paintings pretty. Is you get this movement out through here like that. And that just drags your eye. And, you know, maybe you have just ideas of another little blossom right out there, right out here. Just bang, bang. You paint with confidence. Just grab some of your dirty brush here and just, you know, put that out there. That's what makes them pretty. You know, maybe there's something right there, you know. That's what makes it really pretty here. Now, one of the things we want to do is we want to put in like a little butterfly right in here. And I'm just going to take a little bit of my gray kind of color here. And let's just uh, draw the idea here of a, of a little butterfly. We'll angle him down this way. We'll put this wing on here. Maybe he's going to be coming in right in here at this particular angle here. So... You make kind of a V shape here. That's his main shape is the V. And that's going to make him kind of angled in here. And then we'll, we have to decide which side the light is coming on. Because uh, you can have the shadow, the you know, the lighter petal here. Which I generally do the inside petal here like this. I generally do the inside petal of them a little bit lighter. And the outside petal of them a little bit grayer because uh, I, I like the light coming in between the two petals. So this one will be a little bit grayer here. We'll just make a nice soft gray here. That'll be here. So see where that light, if I gray this down like this side of him right here is into shadow, I really like that look of that here. We'll put just a little bit. So he'll come in here like this with this uh, light edge, the light, light white here. Like a little white butterfly here so this this shape this is his back secondary wing right there and then we'll have this gray which will come in right here like this we'll just give him a little motion he's not going to be all that important in here so just a little bit of our light motion to him not a again if I paint casual flowers I like to paint casual butterflies as well and um, I'm going to switch over here to my little round, my number four round, which I like to use in the painting simply for birds and everything. Let's take a little black. Let's drop in some of that red, a little bit of the blue and red violet, and just a dirty dark gray, not black black. That'll be a little bit too much for him. A little black black. And let's just put in some ideas of the side here of his wings, the little bands of color. That they will sometimes have or little dots of color that they will have here let's uh, use this to kind of shape up the little point 
And, and again, I, I won't make this too perfect. I'm just going to shape it up a little bit here. And uh, there like that. And we'll do that right over here on this side. There like that. And uh, maybe a little bit here to show that side of him there. There we go. That puts that nice contrast right there in the front of him. Lighting that inside there. So you can have a little edge of that dark coming right down here along that front. Right down along that front, which they will have sometimes just a little bit. Then we'll we'll just kind of just give the indication here of his little head here. Just tap your brush. Don't don't try to create a little round circle. That just makes him too stiff. So you want to use short, choppy little strokes as you kind of set his little body and maybe a, a couple of little uh, little antenna, little feelers there. Just little feeler antennas and tap that in and out there just that's a, a little bit heavy right there we'll take I'll show you how to take that out in just a second but a uh, little bit of idea here like that for his little body here and just some little lines for his legs there like that He's just a little guy coming in there now we'll just I'm gonna wipe that black out of my brush I'm gonna tap in a little bit of light color and then I'll use that just to kind of eliminate out some of that, that feeler there even take a little dollop of white and just kind of push that around I want it nice and light on the inside of his wing there anyway so a little white into some texture is great you can back some of that other out you can just tap that right in there like that I'm going to small down his head just a bit, like that. So he's coming in there, just like that. And I'm just going to just blur him ever so, just a little bit, with my finger, so that he stays kind of soft there, like that. And we'll just add a little bit of our greenish kind of movement down and around through there. Right like that a little bit of stuff going on now I got a little dirty right right over there you can wipe that down or you know wipe some of that off or if you get an area that's like this that's a little bit too much there just go back grab some of your blues here let's grab some of the blues and the whites even slightly different color and go through it again I mean just just go right through this again and just create this whole other kind of other color like this and wipe through that like that I love that that's just nice movement here you know it just adds so much and I, I love some of that light movement there so let's just leave some of that light just kind of streaking through there like that that's pretty see that light moving through there like that. It's just real pretty and this is some other little let's just grab a little bit of light moving right through these edges like that that's pretty maybe uh a little bit more light like right in here that's kind of pretty I love the sparkle that we call this fracturing and I'm starting to do this more in some of my paintings using that brush and just kind of fracturing that up a bit like that in there I love it I love the look of that and just taking your corner and just kind of going through makes that uh, little little edges a little sparkly color and uh, a lot of our my students are liking that. I love it. So there we go. Just little bits and just helps break up some of the solid areas of, of color and stuff. So there you have it. A quick and fun uh, little painting of that little butterfly. And I did hit that wing right up there. So I will take just a... Let's just correct that just a bit there. I might even leave that just a bit softer on the edge. We're painters of edges. And if you want something to receive back, you've got to get that edge a little bit soft. So 
having that edge a little blurred there is not a bad thing. Leaving that edge a little bit more sharp is uh, kind of a good thing. And let's just add a couple of little motion movements here to suggest some some stuff there. You could put a, a little bit more of a, a gray stroke out here if you want to put, and it's how much you want to put on the butterfly. I don't want to put that much on it because it's not about the butterfly. It's there just for a little bit of extra little bit extra movement and interest there but that's that's pretty good for him right there okay next thing to do is sign it and then you got it done okay thanks for joining me hope you uh, watch this a couple times give some flowers a change you know change some of these flowers from whites to pinks to yellows to and little blue ones and they'll make it fun but try one of these little horizontal compositions like this they're a lot of fun i'll see you on some other videos you have a great painting day